Hey guys, this is Brody Dolinick from Brody's Garage. This is episode 31. Today is Sunday, April 17th. Happy Easter. Okay, so I am about to measure for my drive shaft. And before we can do that, a few things need to be in place. First of all, the slip yoke. It's recommended that it is bottomed out and then pulled back out about an inch. I've read three quarters of an inch. I've read one inch, so it's about an inch somewhere between there pulled back out. Um, I disconnected the transmission mount from the crossover because the way it was sitting way down here, it was at a pretty severe steep angle, like almost four degrees. Um, currently, it says 88, but that's 88 from 90 is a negative two degree angle um, pointing downward, which means that my pinion yoke back here should be pointing up at two degrees because we want an opposite but equal angle. So two degrees coming down here and then the angle to the drive shaft needs to come back here and then angle back down at the same amount. So this had to come way up. It, this yoke was almost touching the torque arm down here originally the way I first had it installed. So I've been cranking on these adjustment bars here to push the pinion back up to get this to be, well, basically the opposite degree of this over here. So if I take this guy off here and flip it back over here, and the only machined surface I really have is the, is the, uh, the front facing of this yoke here. And I can put this thing on here 10 different times and I'll get 10 different readings, but it's all, you know, relatively close. It's a about an 88 degree angle. And again, depending on where I stick it on here, 88.3, 88.7, 88 88.5. So it's within about a half a degree of the front angle. Now, unfortunately, to achieve this height here, to get that angle, I'm gonna to have to modify my transmission cross member. Um, this is a universal cross member from TCI that's designed to work with probably everything from Power Glide on up to 4L80E, and it's got, you know, several adjustment positions, and it's also got different mounting slots back here. But I've decided that what's important is to get my angles right first and then make the cross member work to fit it. So what I'm going to do and first and foremost, I gotta be very careful because the yoke is almost in contact with the, the transmission tunnel. Um, so it's gonna have to slide this way a little bit. Um, to achieve the right sort of configuration with this cross member, what I've decided I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut it off here and here and also here and there. So the idea behind that is I'm going to separate the center section from the outer section and then get this to mount up flush with the mount. And then I'm gonna rotate the bar until I get, and I might have to move the position here back, or I should say possibly forward a bit so that I can make the whole bar rotate to match its new angles and I'm gonna re-weld it in position. That is my plan as of right now. So I'm gonna unbolt the transmission, cross member, mark it, cut it, bolt it back in here and then rotate it and swivel it until I get it all to line back up, tack weld it into place and then weld it up fully. Well, all right, there it is, cut into four pieces. Now I'm well aware of the fact that the blade is Oh, about an eighth of an inch thick. And I cut four cuts, so that's about a half of an inch that is going to disappear from the overall width of this thing. So that means I gotta kinda mock these things up and I'm gonna have to fill that gap with weld, which uh, should be tricky. But then again, everything is tricky. All right, I'm just gonna tell you right now, I'm not proud of this work. I'm gonna probably redo it at some point. I'm getting this thing together so I can get this thing on the road and then Maybe down the road I'll refabricate this cross number, but let me just show you what kind of mess I'm dealing with here. All right, so after 
cutting off each segment, putting it in there, mocking it up. There's, as I mentioned earlier, some pretty huge gaps. This is probably the biggest one, and these were not far behind it, so I had to fill all that stuff up. Of course, I will grind that down, but I just wanted you to know this is not the kind of work that I'm proud of sending out there. Will it hold up? Will it look okay? Probably. Will I keep it? Probably not. Let's see if I can fill this thing up. You know, it's really not that bad. <laughs> Once I ground down the welds flush and did a little smoothing out, I don't know if anybody would ever know the difference, except for the fact that I've documented this on video. But um, I don't know. I'm gonna get it in there and see if it fits. And uh, maybe we'll just powder coat it and call it a day. Just realize one more thing. I don't need all this because the uh, it bolts to the transmission mount through these two holes here. So this is just extra material that's getting in the way of where my crossover pipe's gonna go. So you know what? Off with you. Okay, the transmission cross member is bolted back into place and snugged up and not looking too bad, I must say. Um, much better than I thought it would. Um, as far as the pinion angles, we have here at the slip yoke about, well, it says 87.2, 87, 87.4. If I wiggle this thing even slightly, it changes. So 87.5, 87, 87 okay, 87.5 roughly. if we go back here to the pinion yoke right here to go by 87 4 87 and a half 88 yeah 87 so you solve one problem and then it creates another one by adjusting my pinion angle by raising the back of my transmission up because it was hanging down quite a bit, created kind of a steep angle, about a four degree angle. So I raised it up, gosh, almost two inches, maybe an inch and a half or so. That brought the front of the engine down, which brought this throttle body opening right down on top of my radiator fan on the passenger side. So now what? Well, one option I have is I can lower my radiator about an inch. The way it mounts right now, it sits right there, and the bottom of the radiator has about an inch to go before it bottoms out against the uh, core support here. So I think that's my first option, and maybe my best option, is to re-drill these holes down about an inch to move the radiator down. I'll put it back in and then see how that works. If that doesn't fix it, then I have to get creative. I have to decide, do I want to go back and raise the back of the transmission up slightly? Um, <laughs> you know, I just, um, not exactly sure. You know, my turbo outlet is only a two and a half inch, whereas this is a three inch inlet. I don't necessarily need a three inch pipe all the way up here. I could go two and a half and then just flare it up to match this, which would give me a little bit more clearance here. Um, so anyway, step one is I'm going to redrill those holes and pop the core support back in and see what that looks like. All right, the moment of truth. I remounted the radiator to the lower mounting points, which dropped the radiator down about an inch. Well, exactly an inch, because <laughs> that's how much I moved the holes. So as you can see, the radiator is now sitting below the deck a little bit, below the core support. So did I give myself enough room? This is a leftover piece of three inch aluminum tubing with a little bit of a bend on it from a previous attempt. And if I get that inside the flange, guess what? It actually clears. So I don't know, the universe is is on my side at this particular moment. This isn't even the perfect piece. I'm gonna cut it at a slightly different angle so that this comes right parallel with the radiator. And of course, I'm gonna wait until I get my fenders back and get this thing exactly where it's going to live. As you can see, right now, the uh, fans are touching the pulley, but the core support is not on there perfectly square. If I kind of square this up, 
this comes back, I don't know, a quarter inch to half an inch. Hey, and if that's what it ends up being is a quarter inch clearance, then that's what it is. Check this out. <laughs> These two pieces of aluminum that I cut for the previous uh, throttle body actually line up pretty well. They're both stuck into the flanges. Um, so the only issue over here is the same as before. I had to cut off this nipple, <laughs> nipple, um, to clear this. So I'm going to have to weld that back on at an angle so that it comes down beneath the uh, intake pipe. And by the way, this is three inch intake pipe. So you know what? I'm gonna try to go with the three inch pipe as far as I can. I do have a three inch to two and a half inch rubber coupler um, that'll go to the turbo. So you know what? Let's, uh, let's just proceed with optimism. Just another installment of fixing my F-ups. <laughs> I installed these two breather cans on either side. And as you can see, I even drew out where my inner fender panels uh, sort of live, that little mark there <clears throat> on the firewall. For some reason, when I measured these and I mounted them, I mounted them up too tall. They were too high and the breather was actually above that line. So I was like, I don't know how I messed that up, but I was thinking I'd have to redrill the holes and remount it. And then I thought, you know what? Let me pop up that little breather cap. The little rubber neck on this thing was about a half inch long and I cut a quarter inch off just enough to put that clamp on it. And guess what? It was just enough to get it to clear underneath my fender panel. So nice little win right there. Next up, subwoofer installation. I drilled three holes in the bottom of that shelf right there and did my best to center everything in there and measure. Hopefully I got it right. I picked up some of these little nut inserts off of uh, Amazon and they are a 3 8 16 uh, bolt on the inside and the outer dimension you use a 15 30 seconds drill bit to drill your hole. Let's see if I got it right. I'm going to slap a little wood glue on there and screw them in. All right, there you go. Wipe off the excess. Well, there you have it. One, two, three nut inserts installed in the cabinet. Let's pop it in the car and see if it fits. All right, there they are. One, two, and three bolts going up into the subwoofer. Uh, they went in really snug. I feel pretty secure about it. Let's go up there and uh, see if we can rock the boat. All right, there's our subwoofer enclosure mounted. And uh, I gotta say, giving it a pretty good shove here with my hand, I I don't feel any flexibility whatsoever. Now I'm gonna also um, put some sound deadening material underneath it. <clears throat> the, uh, the sheet metal there on that, on that little shelf is actually, you know, a little flimsy. And there's a channel which I notched out or I routed out of the, uh, the subwoofer cabinet for it to go through. So it's, it's in there pretty snug. I think by the time I put some of the, uh, what do you call this, uh, Dynamat here, Underneath it, it's going to be very, very snug and cozy. I'm going to take the, uh, the cabinet back out now, and what I'm going to do is route the outer edges just to kind of give it a rounded off look. And I think I'm going to spray it with some of my Raptor bed liner as a texturized coating and put the electronics in it and the, and the speakers and call it a day. Now, the only problem is... <laughs> My 6x9 speakers have very little depth now to get in there. So I'm going to have to come up with a 1 inch spacer to push the speakers up a little bit higher, which I'm not thrilled about, but that seems to be my only option at this point. So anyway, let's proceed. <laughs> Just a quick observation here. Since I welded in these braces right there into the kick panels, I just noticed for the first time opening these doors in quite a while that they feel like 50% more solid and secure. I guess this whole time I've had those things cut out and every time I've opened these doors, they felt a little flimsy. Right now, they just, they feel like considerably better. So note to self, if you're gonna be cutting out room for speakers in there, weld yourself some braces back in. This, uh, this area tends to flex apparently. So my, my instincts were correct. All right, moving on. Okay, we have one stand done, or 
I guess they call them wheel cribs or wheel cradles or something like that. But uh, hey, whatever you call this box right here, I just finished my first of four. Got a lot of lumber cut. I got to run back to Home Depot and buy two more sticks of two by four. I came up just a little bit short. But anyway, there they are. Uh, the way I did it is I <clears throat> measured the width of my tire, each tire, front and rear. These are 10 inches wide. And with the car on the ground, I took a couple of pieces of two by four and I jammed them up against the rubber there on front and rear. And then I measured the overall uh, distance between the far edges of those two two by fours. And I came up with 20 inches long, 10 inches wide. So that's what we got here. We got 20 inches there. We got 10 inches wide. And this is where the tire will sit in this area here. And then the front and rear will stop it from rolling forward or backwards. So that is the plan with this. And as far as the height goes, I got it 13 and a half inches off the ground. So obviously the back ones will be made to the same height. In other words, they'll have the same number of pieces stacked up high. The difference is the back measurements are slightly different, only in the width, because this tire ended up checking in at 11 and a half inches wide. So that's what we'll do here. These pieces are cut to 11 and a half. It's also cut to 20 inches long because it ended up being the same distance front to rear, and it'll be the same height, 13 and a half inches tall. So the reason for all of this is I wanted to get an accurate representation of the car sitting on the ground only up in the air about 13 and a half inches. Uh, if you put the car on jack stands, it doesn't matter where you grab it from, underneath the axle, uh, underneath the front control arms, you can kind of level out the car, but that does not accurately represent the stance that the car is going to have sitting on the ground on its contact patches. So. I wanted to simulate that and get the car up in the air. I'm going to double check my drive shaft pinion and yoke angles. And I'm going to throw some sandbags in the car, in the front seat, in the trunk to kind of simulate what the running curb weight's going to be like. I mean, I'm not going to be perfect with it, but I'm going to try to get it close. And I feel like this is getting it one step closer. I will say that these things are a lot more work than they look like. You see these things on everybody's videos and they're all nice and done and sticking under the car. And um, it's a lot of work. A lot of pieces of lumber to cut. Every single piece gets four screws diagonally. One, two, three, four. And by the way, every layer that you go up, you got to reverse the stagger of the screws. Otherwise, you'll screw right into your other screws. So don't forget that important step. And keep them square. I used a, a right angle over there to square them up before I started, and uh, that's pretty much it. I got one done. I will finish up the other three tomorrow, hopefully, and good night. Okay, I have built my four stands, cribs, cradles, girdles, whatever you want to call them. They're all done, and that was a lot of work, man. Every single board got four screws. I probably overbuilt it, and actually at the end, I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add another brace on this top layer, just so I don't, just so that the weight of the car doesn't like sag, you know, the middle of this. So I wanted a little extra reinforcement there. So I did that on all four, and now it is time to put the car up on the block. So let's do it. I don't know, I kind of like that stance right there. <laughs> all right, let's drop this on the blocks. There we go, let's see if these two by fours will hold up to the immense weight. Push that forward just a little bit more. Okay. All right. Seems to be holding up okay. Now for the front.
there you have it. Now then, the car is sitting at ride height, only above the ground, 13 and a half inches. Okay, so there's our, well, there's sort of our official stance of the car. There's a very slight downhill rake towards the front, maybe a degree. Here's my transmission pan, which now tilts slightly forward because I raised the back of the transmission up to get the angle correct, which is odd. You look at that and it looks like the transmission is going like this, but the tail shaft is still coming down at two and a half degrees. Very strange. Well, okay, kids, the car is up on the blocks and it appears to be pretty stable. I'm, I'm not going to crawl underneath there or anything, but it looks really stable. No, actually, I think we're good. It uh, seems rock solid, and I'm pretty, pretty, pretty happy with the uh, the results of those blocks. So um, it's Easter Sunday. I think I'm going to call it a day here and actually go in and have some family time now. I want to wish you all a happy Easter if you celebrate the thing, and if you don't celebrate the thing, I wish you uh, a happy and splendid day. Regardless, um, I suppose now is as good a time as any to maybe try to leave you on a positive note. And that is this, with a little bit of humility as well. Um, admittedly, throughout this process, and probably increasingly so, as time has gone on, the more times that I crack my knuckles or scrape myself getting out of the car or bump my head or something, or something doesn't go my way, I've, I've found myself getting kind of a little bit increasingly angry and just getting kind of my go-to thing. If I, if I crack my head or something, is to, you know, kind of my default thing is to swear. And I, I will find the most vile thing that I can think of at the moment. It's usually something like G damn it or mother F or something like that. And I've, uh, I've been catching myself doing it a little bit more um, than, I, than I really want to or need to. In fact, I've decided to sort of tell myself that I'm going to start changing that dialogue in my head, that that has to be my go-to response for things is to sort of get angry about things. And so I've been finding that since I made that decision a few days ago, not only have I caught myself and stopped myself, but I've also found that my day is starting to go better and things are starting to fall into place a little easier and my outlook is better and I'm happier as I'm working. And I'm even when I'm running into snags, I'm kind of catching myself laughing about it rather than getting really upset about it. So I want to tell you this in case you're like me out there and sometimes you get a little frustrated and you're, you're, you're angry and you, you know, things are not going your way. And you know, there, there is an alternate way to handle things uh, other than anger and using your foul language and things like that. So I'm going to make my best attempt to just sort of cut that out of my life, not just with the car and the garage, but just with, my general uh, outlook and the way I, I handle situations sometimes. So um, I'm 52 years old and I've decided it's not too late to start being a better person. And so whether you're a Christian or whether you just want to be a better person, um, it's never too late to start. So on that note, I hope you all have a great day, great evening, happy Easter, and uh, I will catch you on the next episode. Take care.